Hello everyone, welcome to our channel Codus Arcade. In today's video, we will be talking about managing input and output operations in C. Before starting our video, I would like to request you to please like our videos and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you receive a notification of our latest videos. So let's start. So reading, processing and writing of data are the three essential functions of a computer program. So most programs take some data as input and display the processed data often known as information or results on a suitable medium. In our earlier videos, we have discussed two methods of providing data to the program variables. One method is to assign values to variables through the assignment statements such as x equal to 5, a equal to 0 and so on. We have another method which is to use the input function scanf which can read data from a keyboard. We have used both these methods in our earlier videos and for getting the results as outputs we have used extensively the function printf which sends results out to a terminal. Unlike other high level languages C does not have any built-in input-output statements as part of its syntax. All input-output operations are carried out through function calls such as printf and scanf. There exist several functions that have more or less become standard for input and output operations in C. These functions are collectively known as the standard input-output library. So here we will be discussing more about some common input output functions that can be used in our C programs. There are many examples like mat.h, ctype.h, etc. So these have to be included in our header files so that we can use the libraries inside them or use the features inside them. So as I told you about the standard input output header file which is stdio.h i will tell you more about this thing now the file name stdio.h is an abbreviation for standard input output header file the instruction hash include stdio.h tells the compiler to search for a file named stdio.h and place its contents at this point in the program the contents of the header file become part of the source code when it is compiled. So as we learned, we can use the scanf function to take an input from the user and we can output the results into a terminal with the help of the printf function. We have some other functions with the help of which we can also do this. So let us see how to read a character with the help of the function which is called get care so the syntax for the get care function is variable name is equal to get care so whenever this get care function is encountered the computer waits until a key is pressed and then assigns this character as a value to the get care function since the get care is used on the right hand side of an assignment statement the character value of get care is in turn assigned to the variable name on the left for example, care name and then name equal to get care. It means that get care takes the character from the keyboard and then it assigns this character to the name variable, which here you can see it has been set to the character data type. The name variable is of the character data type. So get care reads a character from the keyboard and then it assigns that character to the name variable. So this is the use of the getCar function. Now let me show you an example or a sample program where you will see the use of getCar function in an interactive environment. Here this is my editor screen and I have already written down a program for you. You can see that I have included the header file which is include standard input output library. So to write that hash include stdioh is used. Then this is my main function and here you can see this is a variable which is of the character data type. The variable name is answer and it is of the character data type. Then I am using the printf 
function and I'm asking the user, do you want to know my name? And this slash in characters are the escape characters which will take the control to the next line. I have used two slash ins, so it means it will take the control to the two lines after this line. Then I have used the printf statement again and here you can see I have written enter y for yes or n for no. Then you can see the use of the get care function here. What it does is I have done answer equal to get care. So this get care will wait for the input of a character from the keyboard and it will then assign that character to the answer variable which is of the character data type. Then finally, I am using the if else statement. So I am trying to check if the character input by the user is capital Y. And here you can see I have used the pipe symbol, which is also the or. And then what will happen is I am trying for capital Y or small y. So in both the cases, I will be getting the same result because the user may provide a capital Y or else a small y. So I don't want to get confused. So what I have done is I am taking capital Y and small y with the help of this OR operator. Then if the character input is capital Y or small y, I am printing my name is Mr. Bean or else if it is no or if the input from the user is N or any other character, then it will be printing this statement, which is you are good for nothing. This is a basic example. I will show you by running it, the output so that you can analyze what is actually happening with the program. So for that, let me run it. So this is the command prompt for you. Here it's asking me, I will just zoom it for you. Okay, now you can see it's asking me, do you want to know my name? It says enter y for yes or n for no. I will show you both the outputs. First I will give y and then I will press enter. You can see my name is Mr. Bean. So in case capital Y or small y, it is giving me the proper answer which is my name is Mr. Bean. Then I will press enter. Again I will run it for you. And this case I will again zoom it for you. And here I will give capital Y now and press enter. You can again see the answer is the same. My name is Mr. Bean. Then I will press enter again and I will run it once again for you. This time I will show you the opposite or the else block print statement. Here I will press N and press enter. Now you can see the output says you are good for nothing. So this is how it works. What happens is I will press the enter key and you can see as soon as it encounters this answer equal to get character, it will read a character from the keyboard, which will be provided by the user. I will run it again. You can see after these two print statements, I will zoom it again. You can see after these two print statements are executed, then it's waiting for the character to be provided by the user. So this is the use of the get character. Now if I provide any keyboard character, say zero also and press enter, then it will say you are good for nothing because it goes into the else block. I'll press enter and you can see it says you are good for nothing. So this is how the get character works. I'll press enter. So this is a basic example where you can read a character from the user with the help of the keyboard. Now let me show you one more program where you will learn how to read a character from the user and at the same time how to check whether the character provided by us is a digit or an alphabet. So in this case we will be using the built-in keywords is alpha, is digit so that we can check whether a character provided by us is an alphabet or a digit. So I have the program for you. I will just show it to you. So as you can see, here is the program to check whether a character is an alphabet or a number or a digit. So here you can see the change. 
this is alpha is desert are the keywords that i have used here you can see is alpha is desert have been used so to use this what you have to do is you have to use another library or you have to use another library where you will be getting all this is desert is alpha features so this is the library which i have used here hash include c type dot h if you use this library you will be getting all these features is alpha is desert and so on there are many more but i am only using these two features or methods now you can see the whole program i will explain it line by line here you can see i have used the character variable which is the character data type then i am printing press any key and followed by i am using character equal to get char then here it will wait for the input from the user and finally here you can see it will check if is alpha character greater than 0 what this greater than 0 means that if this character that is passed by us is an alphabet then this greater than 0 means that it will be true so this will be a character which is an alphabet so this greater than 0 means it is true otherwise by default it will be set to false and it will go into the else statement so here if we provide an alphabet then it will print character is a letter otherwise it will go into the else block and you can see i have used again an if and else statement inside this else which is called the nested conditional statement i we will be talking about this more in the future videos for the time being just try to understand the logic behind the program and as i said if this condition is not true then it will go into the else block and here it will be checking is does it and then here again the same thing occurs if it is greater than 0 means it's true so that the character entered by the user is a desert then it will print character is a desert or else it will print character is not alpha numeric it means that the character is neither an alphabet nor a desert so this is the basic program and i will run it for you so that you can understand what is actually happening let me run it you can see it it is prompting me by telling press any key i will just zoom it for you and now i will provide a key say 7 and then i will press enter you can see it says character is a digit so i'll press enter and i will show you the other part of the output i will run it again and let me zoom it for you here if i press a and press enter you can see it says character is a letter and let me show you the third part of the output which is if we enter any character which is neither an alphabet or a digit then it will say the character is not alpha numeric let me do it for you i'll press enter then i will run it again the shortcut for this is f9 and then i will just zoom it then here i will just give any character say star and press enter now you can see it says character is not alpha numeric i'll press enter so this is a basic c program where you can use the get char method and also this is digit and is alpha methods with the help of which you can take an input character from the user and check whether it is an alphabet or a digit or not so now let us move on to the next topic which is writing a character so like get char there is an analogous function put char for writing characters one at a time to the terminal it takes the form as shown below put char then in brackets variable name where variable name is a type character variable containing a character this statement displays the character contained in the variable name at the terminal for example the statement 
answer equal to y in quotes then put char answer will display the character y on the screen and the statement put char and in brackets slash n would cause the cursor on the screen to move to the beginning of the next line so this is the use of the put char function with the help of which we can write a character so now i will show you an example of using the put char function so this program will read a character from the keyboard and then print it in reverse case suppose if the input is in upper case it will give the output in the lower case and if it is in lower case it will be giving the output in lower case what it will do is if the input is upper case the output will be lower case and if the input is lower case the output will be upper case so let's check the program here you can see this is the program here also you can see just because we are using this is lower two upper and this two lower functions we have to use this c type dot h header file so let me explain you the logic behind this program here we have this variable alphabet which is of the character data type then i am using the printf function to print enter an alphabet then what i am doing is i am using the put char function which is actually for writing a character in this case what it will do is it is taking the slash in inside the quotes so this thing will give the control to the next line you can see here i have written the comment move to the next line so as soon as this put char function is utilized it will give the control to the next line then what i am doing is i am using the get char function and taking a input from the user with the help of the keyboard and this input will be assigned to the alphabet variable and then i am checking with the if else statement if is lower alphabet this is lower is a built in method it will check if the character in the alphabet is lower then it will provide the upper case with the help of this statement you can see put char to upper alphabet so it will convert the lower case to upper case and if it is lower case then it will go on to the else statement and if it is not lower case and it is upper case then it will go on to the else statement and it will convert it to lower case with the help of this put char function where i have used to lower then in brackets alphabet you have to follow the syntax of writing all this we will be discussing more and more about all these programs in our future videos so this is how we can read a character and we can convert it from upper case to lower case and vice versa so let me run it for you so that you can understand i will run it and here you can see i will just zoom it for you it's asking me enter an alphabet so here i will give a small a and press enter and you can see it's converting it to capital a so this is small a so here this is lower thing is true and it is converting it to a upper case that is capital a now i will show you the other way around i will run it again and let me zoom it and here i will give capital a and press enter and you can see it converts it to lower case that is small a so this is about this code so this is about this code where you can read a character from the user and convert it to a upper case or lower case depending on the type of input given by the user with with the help of using this put char function followed by this to upper or to lower and you have to check it using the is lower method so this is all about this video guys thanks for watching hope you like the video and if you like it then tell us in the comment section below if you have any doubts then post them in the comment section i will definitely try to clear those doubts also like share and subscribe to our channel codes arcade and press the bell icon so that you will get a notification when we post a new video thank you happy learning